Hi guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we are looking at ZBrush 2019. Every single thing that have been said about this thing, the things that a lot of us hoped that would come and a couple of surprises that we think we were going to get that we ended up not getting. We we're going to start off with the very basic stuff that was showed off. A lot of people got tired about the entire thing taking over one whole hour talking about the flat shading method. The flat shading method is a new form of tune shading that has come into ZBrush. It simply means that you can now render your stuff in MPR, which simply means non-photorealistic form of rendering. You can shade this particular stuff that you've made in ZBrush. So you have this amazing organic model and you want to turn it into a sketch. It's done. You can do that using the BPR. And there is a couple of filters that comes in with it. There is this displacement filter that nobody could rest because it kept going on and on talking about the entire thing. There are also render sets that they've made possible for you to, you know, put your hands in and find out. And, you know, they also walk through how you can convert your shaders and make those shaders a uh, flat shaded object. And this is something I don't really think we want right now. And even if we want it, we don't want it the way they presented it. To me, I felt like maybe we are going to have some math caps that will just do this thing automatically and you don't have to go through and start fixing those things yourself. Actually, I actually think that maybe if there was a math cap or something that could just be a one click solution to this, and then you can go ahead and change the outline how you choose and maybe change every other thing how you choose without going all the way to your shader bold settings and go or your material settings and start setting those things up this is my personal opinion i don't know what you guys think about this i'm just saying why would you go through all that test time to fix that thing when you can just simply create a shader ball that has those parameters for us to simply tweak and play with maybe if you're into 2d uh maybe you're into line art or maybe you're into coloring yes of course this will make a lot of sense to you but if you're into like very organic sculpting you use zbrush for your day-to-day -day activities this is totally not what you would want to play with maybe you might want to also just use it for novelty's sake either ways let's move on to the next thing folder was another big thing that was showcased today it is something that we've always anticipated a lot of us have actually said oh when is it going to come how is it going to come i actually made a video about how you can play with your stuffs in anticipation for the folders you can check that in the link within the description and i obviously think that maybe the guys using zbrush are the only people excited about folders coming into their stuff i mean don't get me wrong a lot of people from 3d code they already have something like that working for them but now zbrush is coming out with something and it looks like you know it has never been done before this is something that i actually and honestly think should have been in zbrush for about let's say huh, two three years ago but now it's coming out in 2019 and for god so love the world this particular tool comes up with basically most of the things that you must have suspected that it's going to come up with okay first and foremost it comes up with the fact that you can now turn on and turn on visibility you can do your bull in there you can merge and you know you can do all the fun stuff but one thing which i don't know up until now is if you can create subfolders inside the folder i have no idea how that works but they also debuted something that you know you can pack your files directly inside and you can make a clone copy you can move things from one point to another but subfolders I don't know maybe it's going to work if i lay my hands on the zbrush once it comes out to the public and there's something definitely i'm going to try out and you know give you guys feedback about it let's move on to the next thing that was talked about that seems to make a lot of sense which is the camera to me the camera seems to be one of the amazing features that has made its way to zbrush it is something i would not consider as an update rather i'm going to consider it as a feature following the fact that you know obviously we never had a proper camera in zbrush face it guys we never had one for you to actually set up a camera previously you have to go over to your documents then go over to z uh app link and you know use custom one custom two to set up your camera which was totally shit. when you get to compare it with how you can set your camera in various apps and today they have just made mention of you having a universal camera that you can use within your scene and this particular camera you can you know increase the focal length you can store different camera positions and you can lock the camera locking the camera is just one of the things that you're going to see in the ui and find as the new stuff that is added relatively every other thing in zbrush just looks exactly the same so you cannot really tell if you're using zbrush 2018 or if you're using zbrush 2019 the entire ui simply looks the same it's like using an iphone 6 and maybe an iphone 
iPhone 7. You can't really tell the difference, obviously, except maybe when you use the camera. Another impressive feature with the camera that ships in with ZBrush 2019 is the fact that you can now export your camera details out to other 3D apps. For example, you can export that camera out to Keyshot and maybe Maya and some other 3D apps. And at the same time, you can still import your cameras from all of these apps back into ZBrush. This is something that was talked about in the presentation. I would like to try it myself and see if it works. And this simply works in the way of, or in this way, which simply means that you have to export as FBX file. And maybe if you're importing uh, an FBX file, as far as it has a camera information, it is going to import that same FBX. And just in case you don't know, FBX simply means film box. Moving on to the next impressive thing that was talked about today is the Z Remesher. The Z Remesher got a couple of love from the guys at Pixelogic, and now they said they've made a new Z Remesher which they tagged Z Remesher 3.0. Actually, this is the third iteration of the Z Remesher, and from what they're saying, they said that they've built this thing from the ground up, and it makes a lot of sense now for you to be able to work with Z Remesher. From what this demoed in the presentation, it simply means that you can now Z Remesh any object at all and not lose the topology of that particular object rather zebra should go through and create the polygroups that are related to all of those edges so let's say for example you have a very defining edge that cuts through from one point to another instead of zebra to let's say wipe off that certain crease or you know cut off the borderline it will come through and create polygroups for you this is a very impressive thing guys i actually actually acknowledge the fact that they have taken their time to create something like this and there's a technology attached to something like this which they call legacy so they have the uh, auto polygroup they have the legacy and now they've also made another kind of technology that would keep the edges the, the edges and also keep the creases depending on what you want guys now you have all of the kind of z remesh that you are waiting for or maybe you've been looking out for they kind of demoed another way which you can do the z remesh so just in case you don't know that you can z remesh by using poly paints of course it exists it's been there before so there you go guys you can have that for your own personal use one of the final stuff that we got demoed today is something called the Snapshot 3D. It kind of works like you're using the Spotlight, or should I say it's actually the Spotlight, but now they tagged it Snapshot 3D. I don't know what these guys are doing, I don't know why they named that that way, but it simply means that now you can get uh, your 3D alphas directly there. So you don't need to go all the way to alpha and create 3D, or maybe use something like your sandbox to create your 3D. Or, I don't know, you now just simply can create 3D there directly from that. I actually don't know why these guys decided to create something like this since we already have a plenty types of method of creating 3D using alpha. Just a few years ago they came up with something that you can now create your 3D once you have an SVG file and now they're giving us something like this. It is impressive and amazing by the way but I don't really see the reason why we're having something like that. The edges kind of look clean at the end of the day but also I still don't see why this exists. Why? I don't know. I don't know why. I actually think this is a combination of both the Ziri Mesh and the Live Balloon 2 all tied up together and you know trying to create something quite fancy it still doesn't take us away from the fact that there are certain things that we expected that didn't make it to zbrush 2019 and i'll tell you those right about now speaking about expectations the very first thing which i felt that i was going to see before the show ended was the uv editor there was nothing about that stuff that was debuted nobody said anything about it it was like a buried project under the hush hush team and it never saw the light of the day i felt for some reason that would have happened a lot of people might have also had the same feeling that it should happen some people felt like maybe something else like that could happen but it still didn't happen another thing i felt that should have come also to zbrush would be the ability for you to simply parent another object into another object. I'm not talking about the folder. The folder is simply nice and amazing. It is incredible, but no, I'm talking about you being able to parent an object into another object and also make use of that object in a hierarchical format. What I mean is, think of it like this, that you have two joints and the first joint is up and let's say the second joint is downwards. Can you parent the joint that is down to the joint that is up? So just in case you want to rotate to the local axis of the first joint, you can simply do that. 
that is something else I was talking about and that's something I was expecting to come hopefully they didn't think about it maybe they thought about it although we saw some improvement with the gizmo where they said now the gizmo can now align to surface and the gizmo at the same time can also reset to world axis it's impressive you can tell me and I can tell you but then I really wish we can have something like that the UI is something that we were all talking about everybody was saying maybe this is going to be it maybe they're going to do something maybe this will come up in 2020 but I don't know right up until this time you cannot tell the difference when you're using old versions of ZBrush with 2019 the UI simply looks the same it is killing to just go over that topic over and over again and in as much i would like to admit this we were actually thinking that there might be a proper measuring system that would come over to zbrush there's a lot of people that have asked for this they have ranted about this but yet up until now there is no proper measuring system that is coming over to zbrush the renderer seems to be a little bit yeah but then it works and maybe it doesn't work for you but just in case you don't know if it works for you or if it doesn't work for you i am saying i really wish there could be a proper renderer that could exist in zbrush yes they've given us keyshot which seems to work great and amazing but what if you don't have the license to purchase keyshot at the end of the day and let's say you just want to buy zbrush and do your entire stuff in zbrush is it possible for you to get a very photorealistic render directly in zbrush and not rendering passes and going over to a third party application to do your composition these are things that i so wish that could come over to zbrush and one more thing which i think that they would have you know spent a little more time on working on is the z modeler that seems to be like a very dead project because i don't know i felt like the meaning that they just added the entire thing that has to do with the gizmo that maybe the z modeler was going to get some love and some rework because you know right clicking or tapping space all the time trying to do one particular task is a little bit too much i would say so i felt that maybe there was going to be some work some love to the z modeler but then i believe that might be either a project on hold or a dead project at this point in time and other features that have made their way to zbrush is the insert maker and also a color plugin and you can find all of these in the z plugin section when you have zbrush 2019 and it's also worth mentioning that this is one of those zbrush premieres that i have seen that doesn't have any giveaway i believe a lot of people were on their twitter pages just simply waiting and waiting for the giveaway to happen but nonetheless none of those things happened and also for one of the first times we're seeing that zbrush is coming out with a one month license and also a six months license you can also get a perpetual license if you choose but this time they have come up with some subscription models which i think every other company is going for i don't know why they're coming up with something like this maybe it might be nice for you it could be nice to someone else i don't know if it is something i will subscribe to so tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section below did you see all of the features that you were expecting did you see less of the features are there features that you were looking for that you did not see are there features that you expected that made it halfway through tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section and if you like this video simply give it a like and don't forget to share with your friends and if you're new here it will be amazing if you can hit that subscribe button and also turn on notifications so you'll be the first to know once i upload a new video and until i see you guys again with a rant tutorial update review tips and tricks reaction videos like this peace